Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're doing something a little different. We're diving into Malaysia's electric vehicle market. Ah, uh, Malaysia. Yeah. Now I know it might not sound like the most exciting thing in the world right off the bat, but trust me on this one, all right, because their EV market is projected to just explode in growth over the next couple of years. And that has implications for everybody. Okay. So like, what are we talking, like how much growth are we seeing? Well, they sold just over 11,000 EVs last year. Tiny, right? Yeah. This year, in 2024, they're expected to more than double that number to at least 20,000. Whoa. Okay. So what's causing this huge spike? Well, we found this really interesting report, and it all seems to come down to two words, Praton and Perota. Proton and Perogna, those names ring a bell, but um, refresh my memory. What are those again? Only the biggest car manufacturers in Malaysia. They're like, if you think of like Toyota and Honda, that's what Proton and Perota are to Malaysia. Okay, got it. So are they like making EVs now or something? Yeah. They're both jumping into the EV market and they're both aiming to do it in a big way. And that's what's so interesting, right? They're not just dipping their toes in the water. They're going all in. Interesting. Why do you think that is? I mean, what makes them so confident? Well, it seems like they both realize that for most Malaysians, the main barrier to buying an EV is cost. Yeah, that makes sense. EVs have a reputation for being pretty pricey. Exactly. Right. So Proton and Perota, they built their brands on affordability. They make cars for the everyday person, and they're planning to do the same thing with their EVs. So they're like going after the mass market instead of just the luxury buyers? Exactly. Okay, that's smart. I like it. So what do these new EVs look like? Got any details? Oh, yeah. So Proton is coming out with this new electric SUV called the EMA 7. They're going to launch it in December 2024. An SUV, huh? So like a family car. Exactly. A family car. But here's the real kicker. They're aiming to price it somewhere between RM90,000 and RM120,000. Wait, seriously? That's a, oh, what is that, like 20000 to 26000 US dollars? Yeah, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Wow, that's incredibly competitive, even for a regular, you know, gas-powered SUV. Right, so you can see why there's so much buzz around this car. Yeah. And Perodo's getting in on the action, too. Oh, yeah. What are they up to? Well, they're known for being even more affordable than Proton, right? Mm -hmm. So they're actually aiming to launch their EV, which is due out sometime in late 2025, at a price under RM90,000. Under RM90,000, so that's, what, less than $20,000 U.S.? Pretty much, yeah. Man, if they can actually pull that off. I know. It would be huge, right? Talk about shaking things up. For sure. So we've got these local giants making big moves, but, I mean, they're not the only ones in this market, right? What about other car manufacturers? Are they feeling the heat at all? Oh, absolutely not. The Malaysian EV market is getting crowded. Right. Like, who else is jumping in? Well, for one, you've got a bunch of... Chinese EV brands like uh, BYD and Great Wall Motors are two big ones. Yeah, those names keep popping up more and more. Right. And they come in strong, you know, with really competitive prices and some pretty cutting edge technology. So how are the more established car makers handling all this? You yeah. know, the Toyotas, the Hyundais, the Volkswagens, are they feeling the pressure? Oh, big time. They're definitely feeling the heat. I mean, they can't just ignore this, right? Right. So what are they doing about it? Well, they're ramping up their own EV production, for uh -huh. one thing. And they're pouring money into new technologies, trying to catch up, I guess. Makes sense. I mean, they have to stay competitive. Exactly. And we're even starting to see them design EV models specifically for emerging markets like Malaysia, you know, like really catering to what those consumers want. OK, that's interesting. So it's not just a one size fits all approach anymore. Nope, not at all. They're realizing that these markets are unique and they need to adapt. Smart move. So we've talked about the car manufacturers, yeah. but what about the, I don't know, like the charging infrastructure? Right. Yeah. You can't talk about EVs without talking about that, can you? No, I mean, range anxiety is a real thing, right? Yeah. And if there aren't enough charging stations, people aren't going to buy EVs no matter how cool they are. Totally. And that's something the Malaysian government seems to really get. They actually set this ambitious target of having 10,000 public charging stations by 2030. 10,000. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. Do they even have close to that now? Not even. It's a huge jump from where they are currently. Uh, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. So, like, what needs to happen to actually make that a reality? Well, for starters, it needs a ton of investment. And not just in the physical charging stations themselves, but also in the power grid, because it has to be able to handle all those EVs charging up. Oh, right. I hadn't even thought about that, but that makes sense. Yeah, and then you have to think about the logistics of it all, right? Yeah. Like, where are you going to put all these charging stations? They need to be in convenient locations, spread out across the country, on highways, in cities, even in more rural areas. So this is a pretty massive undertaking. For sure. 
but if they can pull it off, it will be a game changer. Sounds like it. So the government is really taking charge here, huh? Like this is a big part of their whole strategy. Yeah, exactly. And here's where it gets really interesting because their EV goals are actually tied to another pretty ambitious target, which is renewable energy. Oh, how so? Well, they're aiming to get 31% of their energy mix from renewables by 2025. Okay, now I see the connection, because what's the point of having all these EVs on the road if they're just running on electricity generated by, you know, coal-fired power plants or something? Precisely. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? That's why Malaysia's push for renewables is so crucial here. They want to create a truly sustainable ecosystem where those EVs are actually powered by clean energy, you know, solar, wind, hydro, that kind of thing. So it's not just about cleaner cars, it's about a cleaner energy grid overall. Exactly. Ambitious. But how do they actually plan to achieve that 31% renewable energy target? I mean, that seems like a pretty big leap, too. Yeah, it is. But they are making progress. Like, they're investing a lot in solar and wind power, especially large-scale projects. And they're also looking at other sources like biomass and biogas. So kind of like an all-of-the-above approach? Pretty much. And on top of that, they're also really pushing for energy efficiency measures across the board, you know, in all different sectors. OK, so they're really trying to cover all the bases. Yep. It's a multi-pronged approach for sure. But even with all that, you know, it's still a huge challenge to convince people to actually make the switch from their gas guzzlers to EVs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like people are creatures of habit, right? Totally. Yeah. Habits are hard to break. Like, even if they build all the charging stations and make the EVs super affordable, I mean, there's still going to be that learning curve for people, right? You got it. Figuring out, like, how public charging stations work, maybe having to install one at your house even. Exactly. I mean, it's a whole different way of thinking about your car. Yeah. And it's not just the practical stuff either. There's like a whole psychological element to it, too, you know? Oh, absolutely. Cars are more than just cars for a lot of people. Right. Like, it's not just how you get from point A to point B. It's like... An extension of your personality almost, you know. For sure. Status symbol, fashion statement, all that. So the EV industry, they have to figure out how to make EVs not just like practical and affordable, but also, I don't know, like cool and aspirational. That's such a good point. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not just about logic, right? It's about emotion, too. Exactly. You know, but thinking about all this, it makes me wonder if Malaysia might actually be in a better position to pull this off than some other countries. Really? What makes you say that? Well, like, if you think about places like the U.S. or Europe, right, they've had a car culture for, what, like 100 years? Yeah. Multiple generations have grown up with gas stations on every corner. Makes sense. But Malaysia, their car market, it's younger. It's not as stuck in those old ways. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting point, actually. They don't have to battle against decades of ingrained habits and perceptions. Exactly. It might be easier for them to introduce EVs as a desirable, you know, even aspirational option from the get-go. Makes sense. Although, of course, the challenge for them will be making sure those options are actually affordable for the average person. Which brings us back to those ambitious government targets. 15% mm -hmm. EV adoption by 2030. I mean, after everything we've talked about, the challenges, the opportunities, do you think they can actually pull it off? It's definitely ambitious. There's no doubt about that. It's going to take a lot of effort and it'll have to be coordinated, you know, between the government and private companies. For sure. They've got to tackle those infrastructure hurdles we talked about. They've got to make sure EVs stay affordable yeah. and they've got to really sell people on the benefits of going electric. A lot to do. Yeah. But if they can do all that, I mean, Malaysia could become like the poster child for rapid EV adoption. It would be amazing to see. Right. It would be. OK, so. To wrap things up here, what are the key takeaways for our listeners? I mean, we've covered a ton of ground today, a small market with big ambitions, local companies going electric in a big way, a government really taking charge, and this fascinating connection between EVs and renewable energy. What should people be paying attention to? I think the biggest takeaway here is that what's happening in Malaysia, it's not just a local thing, right? It's a glimpse into the future of transportation and energy globally. Mm -hmm. It shows us the challenges everyone's going to face, the opportunities that are out there, and the choices that are going to shape the way we all get around in the future. It's not just about changing what we drive. It's about changing how we power our world. Exactly. And I think that's what makes this so exciting to watch. Absolutely. So will Malaysia succeed? Will they become the EV leaders of Southeast Asia? It's the big question, isn't it? And only time will tell, really. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be a fascinating ride.
Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder all the possibilities. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us.